In the De Invincione, Cicero discusses the topic of refutation for the absolute case. He states that the refutation is a part of an oration in which arguments are used to impair, disprove, or weaken the confirmation or proof in our opponent's speech. Cicero advises to use refutation in order to disprove arguments against oneself. He tells us, every argument can be disproven in one of the following ways. 1. Either one of more of its assumptions are not granted. 2. If the assumptions are granted, it is denied that a conclusion follows them. 3. The form of argument is shown to be fallacious. And 4. A strong argument is met by one equally strong or stronger. It is also important to note the basic point of stasis and what it means for the absolute case. Stasis refers to a point of disagreement between parties where either the facts, definition, evaluation, procedure, or proposal cannot be agreed upon. For the topic of refutation for the absolute case, a case in which we argue the facts about a situation, the stasis would be in the facts of the case. Did Mr. Grant kill Mr. Jackson? And the evaluation, is the prosecution's argument of good value? I will now use Cicero's advice to refute the claims that the defendant, Mr. Jackson, as he was named in class, murdered the deceased, Mr. Grant. I will use the discussion forum leaders post as the prosecuting argument and refute their claims using Cicero's advised tactics. I will show that either one or more of the prosecution's assumptions are not granted. If their assumptions are granted, it is denied that a conclusion follows them, and the form of argument they practiced is fallacious. As a result, the prosecution's argument will be met by one equally strong and, in my opinion, stronger, but first, the facts of the case. Mr. Jackson and Mr. Grant are said to have met traveling. They have bonded on the road and decided to spend the night together in a hotel. Mr. Grant was of high status and had accumulated a good deal of wealth in his time. Mr. Jackson, on the other hand, was not so wealthy, but the two got along well that day. Other patrons at the inn said the two enjoyed themselves drinking that night and went off to bed. The next morning, Mr. Jackson had to leave for work. He called out to Mr. Grant in the dark in the early morning to say goodbye. Upon hearing nothing, he decided to leave the inn. Later, Mr. Grant was found dead on the scene with stab wounds. Mr. Jackson was later found with a bloody sword. Mr. Jackson insists his innocence, and I will defend him. The prosecution argues that the defendant, Mr. Jackson, had a motive to kill the deceased, Mr. Grant, based on monetary gain. But the defendant is not the only person who may have wished to be wealthier. One hole in the prosecution story is the money. Where did the money go? If the defendant did in fact kill the deceased because he wanted his money, why wasn't he found with it? Mr. Jackson was found with a bloody sword but no money. Why would he commit such a crime motivated by money as the prosecution claims and not take the money? Mr. Jackson was found with a bloody sword but there is no way to know it was Mr. Grant's blood. There are countless other reasons that a sword, a weapon used to defend oneself and slaughter animals, would have blood on it. Therefore, the conclusion the prosecution is drawing cannot be proven. The prosecution states the blood found on Mr. Jackson's sword is Mr. Grant's blood, but there is no way of knowing this is the case. There is no DNA testing in ancient Rome. The prosecution is therefore purposely lying to the court and twisting the facts of the story to fit their narrative.